So the process of drug discovery uh, and development is actually uh, pretty complicated and long. Um, so how do we discover, how do we start working on something? Um, so a, a disease is identified or diagnosed and people need medication for that. Um, various biologists study the disease and start to understand what drives a disease. Um, something similar to if your car breaks down and something is wrong with it, you take it to a mechanic. The mechanic does diagnostics. And let's say that your steering wheel is not working properly and it's not turning your wheels. The steering wheel is attached to a shaft, which then is attached to a bar that controls the wheels. And you need to understand what component is broken. Now, a car is far more simpler than a disease uh, because it's in a more linear fashion and it's understood framework. But in a disease, it's, it's um, multiple components um, become somewhat similar to an um, electrical board uh, where they're cross uh, wirings and et cetera. So it's a little bit more complicated. So we need to discern what's really gone wrong uh, and identify that to then, then we can actually fix it or modulate it. Um, once that is identified, then you have to develop biological assays, which are developed in, in petri dishes. Um, and then you start sort of what is called screening. So you start uh, synthesizing compounds uh, and you screen them against these tests and then you see if the compound does what you think it's going to do. Then you move into uh, from a dish to more of a uh, rodent animal model that mimics the disease and you see if it actually does what you think it does and modulates the disease. At the same time, you then try to understand how can you monitor what you think you're doing, uh, modulating the disease, without actually being invasive, without cutting into anything. Uh, so you develop what is called a biomarker to tell you, yes, we've delivered the drug and we've, it hit the target and we know what it's doing. Uh, and the component of actually giving a drug orally or whether it be intravenously or whichever method, you need to be able to deliver that drug and deliver it to the target. Uh, so there are a lot of experiments that have to be done and a lot of things have to be changed and modified in order to allow that particular molecule or modified molecule to do that. Once that's accomplished, then you go to higher species. Uh, and then eventually you, you do all these testings, uh, build all this package data package, and you write a very long and thick document uh, to present to the FDA. Uh, and it is called an investigational new drug. And that package has all the experiments that's been done on one molecule. The time frame, and this is just the beginning before you go into the clinic, uh, and a long time before even a patient sees it, that time frame can take about five to six years. Then you start your clinical trials. The first one is safety. Uh, and all your studies before that has led you to say, I can dose up to this amount, and I know I haven't seen any toxicity, so it's gonna be safe. And the, your, the dose that's gonna provide the efficacy for that disease will be somewhere in the lower component of that dose. So you go in and you do more of what is called a safety study in healthy people. Uh, once you get that you're safe and you're getting the exposure and it's reaching what you think it's going to do, then you move into phase two where now you begin to see the patient population. And there's certain uh, minor things that you, you identify uh, along with having safety in that population and the people that are sick and the patients. Um, and then you again monitor all these other parameters that tell you, yes, the drug is doing what you think it's doing and it's not hurting anything else. Because remember, you're gonna take a little pill that has a little chemical structure that has to be taken and it has to go through your bloodstream into your cells and go to the specific target uh, without touching a lot of other stuff that can hurt you and only work on the things that should help you. Uh, that's actually a bit of a challenge if you try to, to think about it. Then you move into a very important phase, which is called phase three. And this is where now you're going into patients, but it's a lot more patients uh, and a lot more readouts to tell you, yes, the drug is working, the drug is working effectively, it's not going to have what is called a placebo um, effect, and it's still safe. And then you finally are able to register and, and do a new drug application uh, to be, then that drug can be available uh, to patients that process takes about 14 to 15 years from the beginning to the end.